today's video, I decided to do a Q&A about being a bikini barista. So, obviously I don't have <laughs> like any subscribers, so for the Q&A, I asked my work Instagram. So on my work Instagram, I do have like 50,000 followers, so I asked them to ask me questions about being a bikini barista. So today I'm gonna answer a few. I'm gonna try and answer a few questions in case you guys are wondering what it's all about. Okay, so what made you want to be a bikini barista? I didn't really wake up one day and say, oh, I've discovered my life dream and it's being a bikini barista. No, that wasn't the thing. Um, I was working at a grocery store before and one day I was just like over it, so I literally just walked out of the job. You know, it was good at the time for like a week and then I was like, oh shit, like <laughs> I'm super broke, I need money. So one of my friends, she had heard about bikini baristas and she told me like, hey, you should try it out. Like I've heard girls can make really good money there and all you're doing is making coffee in a bikini or lingerie or whatever. Yeah, at that time I was so broke. I had so many bills to pay, I was just like, you know what? Whatever, let's just try it. You know? Within a week, I made more money than I would have working almost a whole month at my other job. So I was like, okay. Why didn't I know about this job earlier? So, yeah. And then I told my friend about it, and now oh, she's a bikini barista too, so. What is the craziest thing that has happened to you as a bikini barista? Um, craziest thing, gosh, you know, I feel like I could make a whole video out of this. There's, it's men, and our men can be creepy. I think one of the weirdest ones, this guy asked for my bladder. And I was like, excuse me, my bladder? Like, what do you mean? He's like, yeah, how much do you want for your bladder? He's like, I didn't come here for coffee, I came for your bladder. At that point, it's not creepy. I don't know, he's not like cannibal or whatever. Um, so I was just like, I am not following. He's like, yeah, how much would you charge me for you to pee in a cup so I can drink it? <laughs> That's how you guys can kind of see what I have to deal with on a regular basis. Are your customers mostly good guys or do you get a bunch of really pervy guys on the regular? So you kind of build your clientele, like I said in my last video. Um, depends what kind of girl you are, is the kind of customers you're gonna have. Honestly, my customers, are really good guys, they're respectful, they don't say gross things, um, but obviously there's always gonna be guys that come in that I never met, that I don't know, and they're probably planning on not coming to see me again, so they just start saying really nasty things, like inappropriate things about what they wanna do to me, what they want, like what position they want me in, and just all these gross things and like it's really awkward for me to have to tell them to stop saying those things um, they either drive off or the rest of the experience is kind of weird like me making the rest of the coffee I kind of get quiet and just don't talk to them anymore what's the biggest tip you've ever gotten so Christmas time is a good time to be a bikini barista that's when the guys are most generous so the most I got from one guy was $500. Um, might not seem a lot for like a stripper or something, I don't know, but for me, from one person, $500 was the biggest tip, and that was for Christmas. Also, working on your birthday is really good. Like, on my birthday, I made over $1,000, so yeah. Christmas and your birthday is going to be the best days to work. What's a misconception the customers have about the job? That's a good question. Um, very often I get guys that come in and their d**ks are out. Literally their d**ks are out or they're naked. They think that because I'm in lingerie or in like a skimpy outfit that that's okay for them to just come in with their d**ks out. Um, or I'll be making their coffee and then all of a sudden I'm like, I kind of suspect it, you know, because they get really quiet. So I turn around and they're masturbating. So they do that without your consent. They'll just straight up start masturbating and not even ask like, hey, I'm gonna masturbate, I'm gonna do this. So it's it's really awkward because then I have to be like, you stop it or I shut the window and... Is it just painful getting up that early? Yes, um, I cannot get used to it. It's been like over a month since I've been working the morning shift and every morning when that alarm rings at 2.40 in the morning, it never gets easier. 
But the nice thing is getting off at 10 a.m. Um, I literally have all day to do things, but then you just feel kind of groggy the whole day. So that's the only bad thing, but, but yeah, you can just fight through it. Drink lots of coffee, even though I don't like coffee, but. Just wanted to say that you're awesome and thank you for making our morning so fun. Yeah. Uh, see, those are the kind of customers I love. The ones that are just respectful, kind, and they don't, you know, they don't do those weird things. Do you feel you get tipped decently? For the most part, most of the guys tip really good, like $5 and more. But, you know, some days you just get that streak of like $1 or no dollars. That's the bad thing. You kind of like start comparing yourself to other girls. You're like, wow, why am I not getting any tips? Why am I only getting dollar tips? You start like looking at yourself. You get paranoid, self-conscious about, wow, there must be something wrong with me if nobody's tipping or they're giving me $1. You know, for the most part I get tipped decently, but yeah, there's always going to be those days where your tips are just not that great. But... In my experience, it's depending on the stand that you're at. Some stands, as crazy as it sounds, some stands tip more. Like the guys that go there tip more. Even though it's like almost the same city, they'll tip more at one stand than the other. It's really odd. How many guys hit on you a day at the stand? Oh, this is probably 10, maybe more times a day um, that I'll get asked out or they'll ask for my number. And it gets very uncomfortable sometimes because they'll get really really pushy about it i mean like they'll say if you give me your number i'll give you a good tip and to me that's just messed up like i get very annoyed with them when they say that i'm just like just, just don't tip me like you're not gonna have my number do you feel did you feel uncomfortable when you first started your bikini barista life um yes very uncomfortable I've always been very self-conscious about my body. I've always not been that secure about it. So going from, you know, being covered at work, having a normal job to all of a sudden being almost naked in a bikini or sometimes even outfits that are more revealing than that. It was really hard to get used to for me. Um, some girls just do it naturally for me. It's still, even till this day, I'm not 100% comfortable. A lot more than before. Before I would dress a lot more conservative, I guess you would say. My outfits have gotten a little sexier. So so yeah, you do get more comfortable, but it's still just, it feels weird having people stare at you. I, I'm so ready to be done with it, honestly. Would you go out with someone that came to your stand? Um, no, obviously because I'm already married and I have my daughter, so I would never go out with anybody. But, like, speaking, if I were to be single and didn't have a baby, like, I don't think I would date anybody at the stand. Um, not to diss people that go to bikini stands, but I just wouldn't want that. I wouldn't want someone that goes to those places as a partner. <laughs> what is the scariest thing that has happened to you? Uh, I would say at the stand that... I'm working at right now, there's this window uh, where it's not tinted so someone could come and see you from there. It's very hard to do so but you can if you really tried. So I did have this stalker for a while. Um, I didn't even notice it till I don't know how long he had been doing it but he was definitely spying on me for some time until one day I finally saw him do it. So. That really freaked me out. Imagine at like 4 in the morning, everything's super dark everywhere, it's lonely, and then you have this guy just looking at you through the window. So that scared me a lot, um, and then that's why I started wearing a robe to work so they wouldn't see me. And But he kept on coming, like I kept seeing him, and then one day I needed to go outside for some ice. So I always carry, I always keep that thing on me, so... I had it with me and then I went outside for the ice, it was still pitch black and that guy ran towards me. Um, I do believe he wanted to attack me and since I had my gun with me, I did point it at him and I said to get away or I'm calling the cops and I will shoot if you try to touch me. So 
obviously his first reaction was like oh my gosh i always just walk here this is where i walk and this is where i just like you know i'm free to walk here i'm like no i know you've been spying on me every day and this needs to stop that for me was the scariest thing that happened um it was very scary for me to come into work for the next week but he didn't come back and it's been almost a month since that's happened and he still has not come back so i think he learned that's always my fear someone coming in the stand and you know kidnapping you or raping you so that's why i did decide to get a gun because i am a woman it's obvious men are going to be stronger than me and if they really wanted to they can easily do something to me so I believe if you work in that industry, a gun is the way to go. You know, pepper spray is not so good. You can stop them a little bit, but a gun is going to be your lifesaver. In my opinion, okay, because I know a lot of people are against guns, and to me, I think if, if a gun is in the right hands, it's actually beneficial to the world, so. And I'm not some crazy person that's gonna do something bad with a gun. I would only use it if it was a life-threatening situation. You have so many sexy outfits. How do you decide what to wear the next day? Ugh, I hate deciding what to wear for work. Like, honestly, that's the most annoying part about this job of work outfits, and I'm always getting rid of them. Um, because, honestly, the outfits that we get, they're, <laughs> they're pretty cheap. There's this guy that comes around and sells them, and his stuff is amazing, but well, they wear and tear you know they're just little strings so um if you don't wash them properly they start looking bad so and i'm kind of that person that is lazy to separate them sometimes and i just throw them all together and start changing colors they just look old so i have to get rid of them but yeah how do i decide i don't decide the day before i kind of just wake up grab something from the drawer really quick and just hope it looks good someone else as how much okay so this is also annoying um guys think that just because i work here that they can buy me that i'm some kind of escort this is so annoying like i get this question so many times um no you can't buy me no i'm not an escort i'm just a bikini barista that is it and the stand they kind of try to ask it in a polite way they'll be like Oh, is this the only thing you do? And I'm like, yep, just coffee. They're like, nothing else. Um, you don't do anything else, like something else to get paid. I'm like, nope, this is it. <laughs> uh, do you ever get nervous in front of strangers? Well, my job is being in front of strangers most of the day. Uh, at first, when I first started, it was kind of uncomfortable because I've always been kind of socially awkward. So. Having this job, I really had to change. It's kind of weird now because a lot of the guys that come in, they're super shy. So I kind of have to be the outgoing one, ask them questions, make conversation. So this job helps you in, in learning how to speak with people. I feel like I'm not as awkward as I used to be, so that's nice. So yeah, I wouldn't say I'm nervous anymore. Um, I do get uncomfortable. And that's only when I get a car full of men. So that happens kind of often too. Not that often, but at least once a day where I'll get a car full of men, maybe four, five, sometimes more. And to me, that feels uncomfortable because you do feel the pressure. You feel like so many eyes on you. It feels kind of weird because you're, you'll hear them laughing or they're like whispering and obviously you know I think anybody would feel uncomfortable in that situation because you know they're talking about you or they're laughing about you and yeah that would be when I get kind of nervous and I try to hurry the drinks up so I can just like get it over with I hate when I get cars full of men I mean it's good for sales so that's like the plus side about it but other than that I hate it I just dread it I literally roll my eyes when I see a car full of men like not in front of them obviously but I can see through the camera I'm just like oh why so yeah I think that's the only thing that kind of makes me nervous in this job but any other man does not make me nervous your profile says I can ask you out why I put that on my profile because I get 
customers who I build relationships with and yeah like I said I don't give them my number or anything but like I'll have them on my priority messages on my Instagram so if they message me like I get a little no notification so and those are usually the customers that come to see me a lot and that I feel comfortable with they know not to pester me with messages over and over and over again so that's kind of what I put as my priority messages is my main customers but sometimes those customers even them they get out of hand and they think just cuz that just cuz you're nice to them that means that you're attracted to them you want them and you secretly want to have a relationship with so yeah I've had a few of my customers that I've had to just like block or not talk to anymore or even when they come see me I'm just like very cold because I don't want to give them that false hope and just to let them know like hey I'm not attracted to you I'm sorry if you got that idea but literally our job is to be nice to you that is how we get our tips like you can't think that you're special and I don't want to sound rude like like I said there's some customers that know that is my job and they respect it and some of them I think I honestly think I only have like two customers that I have on my personal Instagram and on my Facebook because they're respectful, they know I'm married, they know I have a daughter and they know they're not going to get with me ever. They just like me as a person and they respect it. So yeah, it, it is possible for my customers to have access to my personal life and by that I just mean like Facebook, Instagram. But from all the customers I've had, there's only been, I think two, yeah, only two that I have on my personal what is the most embarrassing thing that has happened to you? Um, um, hmm. I was making this guy's drink. Um, he asked for, I think, like a Red Bull with green apple or something. So the green apple was like way up high in a shelf. And obviously I'm like really short. Well, I guess it's not obvious, but anyway, I'm 5'2". So I'm really short. I can't reach that high. So I leaned up to get it and the espresso machine was right there. So my boob like touched part of the espresso machine and it was burning hot and I burnt a part of my nipple. I literally burnt some of my nipple from how hot it was. It was excruciating pain. I was screaming and the customer saw and then I had to like take my boob out and put some I I didn't know what to do because literally my nipple was like it was burning and it wasn't like the very center of the nipple it was like the edge of it but still um yeah I still have kind of the mark on it from when it happened like that part of my nipple is a little bit lighter <laughs> than the other part so yeah that was kind of embarrassing and the customer was like freaking out he was like oh my god I'm so sorry I didn't mean to order that and yeah that was kind of embarrassing because and then it was really awkward because I had a whole line and I needed to just like go through the pain I'm gonna stop the video there if there's any other questions that you guys may have, feel free to ask me. I can do a part two. But that's kind of the questions that I got sent and a lot of them are just repetitive or like dirty questions and I'm not gonna answer those here. So yeah, um, thank you guys for watching it. Hope it was kind of interesting and I will be making more videos about this soon. Also, I'll be making life vlogs, mom vlogs. I, I don't know. I don't really have plans for this channel i kind of just want to make videos that i want to make obviously i'm open to ideas so feel free to give me ideas and yeah let me know thank you guys bye